Muy buenas tardes a todos y bienvenidos a Villavistera Center for the Arts. Good afternoon and welcome to Villavistera Center for the Arts. My name is Vanessa Calderón Rosado. I am the Chief Executive Officer of IVA, Inquilinos Boricuas en Acción, which translated to English with me for Rican Tenants in Action. And I want to briefly welcome you to the space by giving you a brief history of what IVA is and why you're here today, and why arts is such an important part of the work, part of the work that we do. So in 1968, 45 years ago, a group of Puerto Ricans that lived here in the South End uh, organized to fight the plans of the Boston Redevelopment Authority, or BRA, to remove them from the neighborhood. So rallying to the cry of no nos mudaremos de la parcela 19, which have not been moved from parcel 19, they organized EVA, not only to develop housing in the neighborhood, affordable housing, but to provide programs, educational programs, and arts programs to serve the community. So as we fast forward 45 years, and in fact, in this same space, last Friday, we celebrated our 45th anniversary. It was a wonderful event. And, uh, so as we fast forward to today, EVA empowers individuals through uh, education, workforce development, and arts programs, and develops and preserves affordable housing. So today we have 510 uh, housing units in our portfolio, all affordable units. Most of them right here in our backyard in the neighborhood of Villa Victoria, and some others in other parts of the city of Boston. And on the education, workforce development, and art programs, we have a bilingual preschool program, after school programs, youth development programs, a strong partnership with Monkey Hill Community College providing adult education, GED, ESL, and college courses, uh, computer and technology programs, and last but not least, that's artists, the arts. So you're here today because 45 years ago, that group of Puerto Ricans understood very well the power of arts and culture in building communities, in bringing people together that will transcend language and that will transcend time. And how important the arts are, not only for expression, artistic and cultural expression, but also to build community and to take pride on history, on culture, on our roots. So it is with great pleasure that I welcome you on behalf of the Board of IVA, the community of Villa Victoria, and the staff of IVA to this space today to have this very important conversation. Before I turn the microphone over, I want to also introduce to you all the face of the arts for IVA, Elizabeth Pavon Zavira, who is here in the back of the room. <laughs> Ellie, as we call her uh, uh, with lots of, of, of love, and she is the person that many of you interact the most with as far as a representative for the arts. So once again, I very much appreciate the opportunity for you all to come here this afternoon. Thank you, and once again, welcome. And now let me introduce the uh, next person who will take it over and have this important conversation with John Cavalli this afternoon. It is a pleasure to introduce this person because for many years we have been having, uh, we have had a great partnership with the Boston Children's Chorus. In fact, the first neighborhood choir started right here in Villa Victoria in this space. So please help me welcome David House. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. See, I come from a Baptist tradition, and when we say hello and good morning and a good afternoon, I like the call and response, so we're going to start over. Good afternoon, everyone. Now I feel at home. And thank you, Vanessa, for that warm introduction. Um, I am David House, the Executive Director of the Boston Children's Chorus, and I'm also a proud parent of a BCC singer. We've been proud members of Mass Creative for many years and have been thrilled with the momentum and the direction of the organization, particularly with the Create the Vote campaign. Thanks to Matt Wilson and his team for connecting and energizing our arts and culture community. 
In the same spirit that Mass Creative aims to convene and mobilize our arts and culture community, BCC was founded to convene, connect, and engage Boston's many diverse communities. At the Boston Children's Chorus, we believe in the power of music to connect us more deeply to each other, particularly through song. BCC, BCC brings kids together from all over greater Boston, kids from urban and suburban communities, kids who never have a chance to meet, and we create the conditions for them to harmonize both socially and through a shared love of music. Now, many of you know us for the great music that we make uh, around the city, but what you may not know is that there's a social justice engine that drives our music. We were founded a little over 10 years ago by Hubie Jones, with a pilot of 20 kids in one choir, and today we're over 450 singers in 12 choirs in five locations, and as Vanessa said, our first neighborhood location started right here in this very room with just a few kids several, several years ago. And when our kids walk on stage, they really do show Boston what it can become. In many ways, this same sense of connectivity is integral in the way that Mass Creative approaches its work. Mass Creative is a statewide advocacy organization that seeks to build support for the cultural, arts, and creative communities across the Commonwealth. We believe that cultural prowess is essential to a vibrant economy, an effective education system, and a healthy and safe community. Create the Vote was established to ensure that the arts and culture community, its people, its institutions, and its issues are not ignored in upcoming elections, in this case, the election for the next mayor of Boston. The election represents a unique and long-awaited opportunity to engage with candidates to listen, learn, and assess their position and platform. Each of the candidates received a questionnaire from Create the Vote that generate thought, generated thoughtful responses on a range of arts issues. There were meetings with individual candidates and my colleagues from more than 20 different cultural organizations representing arts, artists, and institutions from all over the city. These meetings allowed for a far more in-depth discussion of what arts meant to each candidate. Now we all agree that Boston is rich and vibrant with dynamic cultural arts traditions. And those traditions extend beyond the avenue for the arts from the large and mid-sized organizations to the amazing art and culture that lives within Boston's many diverse communities. And we're proud of that. And we need a mayor who is equally proud, one who can build upon what we already have in Boston and better integrate arts and culture initiatives with other city priorities, including education, public policy, economic development, housing, and transportation. As an arts and cultural community, we are looking for a vision that we can buy into. And we, as a community, are here and ready to work with the next mayor of Boston. So I welcome you. I look forward to our conversation this afternoon. And now I'd like to hand over the mic to Emmy Award-winning arts and entertainment critic, Joyce Kohaywick, who is currently the president of the Boston Theater Critics Association and runs one of the leading Boston websites, Joyce'sChoices.com. I am really thrilled to be here today and to moderate this conversation. I believe in conversation, and this is a great opportunity to have one really informally and get the questions asked that you want to have answered. We are thrilled to have two candidates for mayor, John Connolly and Marty Walsh, who have certainly raised the bar on what we can expect from this city in terms of its commitment to arts and culture. To date, the work of the Create the Vote Coalition has earned unprecedented commitments from both candidates to do the following. Appoint a cabinet level position for the city of Boston dedicated to arts and culture. To integrate arts and cultural policy plans into city planning and development. To invest in arts and cultural initiatives. To develop a citywide strategic cultural policy and to lead by example by convening community leaders and actually attending events. We want to see these guys at the theater, at concerts, strolling through our museums. We are certainly delighted by these commitments and we are holding these forums really to dig a little bit deeper to, yeah, we're here with us here, to dig a little deeper to get some detailed specifics about exactly how these candidates want to take their ideas and turn them into reality. 
That's, that's the key. In addition, we have also been uh, working to have Boston residents pledge to be arts voters, and I'm wearing my kid right here. We are not endorsing any particular candidate. We are endorsing the arts, which means that we want every voter in the city of Boston to think about the candidate's arts platform before they go to the polls and once they're in that voting group. Who is going to do the best job in terms of the, the creative and the cultural community here? Uh, there, in fact, has been a major uptick in pledges this week uh, as a result of various groups like the Boston Center for the Arts who sent out dedicated emails to their supporters. They signed up 70 pledges in one day. So if you have a constituency and, and, and interest in this election is really ramping up right now, this is the time to get <laughs> your supporters and send out a dedicated email or rally their support to be arts voters uh, if you're looking for suggestions on how to do that, just see Tracy and Dan at the registration table. There they are right back there. Now, finally, to talk more about what he's actually going to do as the mayor of Boston, we have with us Boston City Councilor and candidate for mayor of Boston, John Connolly. We want to, first of all, thank you, John, for being here today. We know we've got tons of things to do. We're going to be busy till after midnight, I assume. We want to thank you for making time in your schedule to talk directly to us. We are certainly amazed by the kind of determination and tenacity it takes to run for elected office, and we are very grateful that you are willing to serve the people of Boston. So thank you so much. very historic setting. We're hoping to make some more history here today. So without further ado, John, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. family a lot uh, and my children, but uh, my wife really uh, is a superstar and, and manages through all of that and keeps our family going, uh, but uh, the thing to her that is the best part of this campaign is that I met Joyce LeVay with so. <laughs> <laughs> That is a true story. So, um, so thank you for your vote for allowing that to happen. Uh, thank you, Joyce. Uh, I want to just say to begin that uh, what you have done in this campaign is amazing, and we thank you for it. I thank you for it individually. I think every candidate would thank you for what you have done. Um, and you really, uh, among all, all of uh, the groups that across Boston and all of the people who care so much about this city, you've asserted your voice in, in an amazing way and really brought people together and educated me, and I think educated all the candidates, and I think I think whoever the mayor is, you're gonna see real results, and I, I just, uh, it's one of the heartening parts of running here is to watch what, what Create the Vote has done, so I thank you for that, and, uh, and I, I mean, it was just that we are a city brimming with talent when it comes to the arts in all corners of the city and uh, in all corners of the arts world, visual and performing, uh, and, and throughout this whole city, uh, from the do-it-yourself uh, rock scene. I know that's a very uncool way to say that. <laughs> but I've met with some of those arts, uh, you know, to uh, the children's chorus, and. And everything in between. Uh, we are brimming with talent, but I think there is no doubt uh, that we are not making full use of that talent. We are not letting that talent shine, uh, and we are not letting all of that talent put a defining signature on Boston uh, that will make Boston an even better place to live and draw people here from around the world. And I think the mayor needs to take all of that talent, take this amazing community, uh, 
and open the doors of City Hall and say, um, show us everything you've got and make this happen and tell me how I can help make it happen. Uh, because it will be for the benefit of the whole city. So what I want to see is a robust art, social, and cultural agenda that flows through the city. I think the way that we do that is by having an arts and culture level cabinet, but you can just have a cabinet in an office. I want to have an artist running it, uh, and I want to have an arts commission that supports it, that's made up of artists from the whole arts community in Boston. I don't want it to be just a downtown scene or uh, or just you know one aspect. I want it to, I want it to have a representative of the entire arts community, and I want that cabinet to go out and come up with the agenda of what we're going to do. I don't want it to come from my office. I don't want it to be my agenda. I want it to be the agenda of the arts community because I believe if you fully empower it, you will put your own unique signature on it, uh, and it will help define Boston in an even better way. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, I think it's about not just supporting the arts, but supporting artists. And I think about how we can support artists in a few different ways. Uh, artists fall into the housing crunch that we have in Boston in the same way everyone else does. Uh, we know how to build affordable, we just don't build enough of it. Um, and we know how to, how to build luxury condos. Uh, everything in between, we're not so good at. Uh, and so you start $1 above qualifying for affordable, move into the heart of the middle class, and we don't have a housing plan. We can't get you there. Uh, a recent college graduate, professional, an artist, a senior, uh, an empty nester. We can't get you from rental to ownership. We can't get you from uh, one bedroom to three when you need it. And so what I want to have is an aggressive and bold housing plan, and I want to make sure we are thinking about every community in Boston, and I want to make sure that part of that plan uh, is aggressively uh, promoting building and being bold and experimental when it comes to live workspace for artists, and make sure that you can uh, have that pathway uh, to uh, to a home uh, and a workspace in Boston. And we've seen some amazing examples in Boston, but uh, they are fleeting and they are not supported over the long haul. And I want to make sure we change that. I think the second way we can support artists uh, is to ease our permitting process. And I have heard from you <laughs> countless stories uh, about what a nightmare it is. And I think the one that just really hammers at home to me or, uh, the folks at Bartlett Yards trying to put on uh, a show and ultimately trying to put on a, a, you know, a, uh, a show and uh, ultimately, or a festival and ultimately it hangs out there forever. You, you want to be planning a year out and it hangs out there forever only to be told at the end you just can't do it because of the generator and the electrical source you're going to plug into and we're real sorry but we're shutting you down a week out. Then you go to Cambridge and they have you fill out one form and then they walk in the back room and they bring out their own generator and hand it to you. <laughs> and I think that says everything. Uh, and I'm not going to be a mayor of Boston who's afraid to say, in that regard, we ought to act more like Cambridge. Um, you know, we, we can learn a lot from our neighbors. And so I think easing permitting is a key piece. I think there's a, a third piece and a fourth piece here about how we can support artists. Uh, and the third piece is we can build more public performance space. Uh, and create more affordable ways for artists to perform and to display their work. And we can look to Seattle as an example on how you can do that. Uh, and I think we ought to get creative about how we can finance more uh, performance space across the city. But we want to empower the whole arts community. You shouldn't have to have massive funding behind you to access space. You should be able to access space uh, no matter what. Um, and I think it's everything from capital budget commitments to more performance space to programs that will support storefront theater and pop-up art galleries. Uh, I think there's many ways to leverage that. And the final piece is the funding, and I know that's the tough question, and I'll try to head that off at the pass because I never like answering it. Um, but uh, I think that we look at the 1% piece uh, and we make that happen, and I'll be the first to say I think Mike Ross is the one who really championed that in the preliminary. Um, but he's right, we've got to find that permanent source of funding. Uh, in the city, and it's not lost on me that we spend about a million dollars a year in arts in the city, but really if you cut it down to what it's all about, it's about $150,000. Uh, and you go to Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, and they're starting their commitment at $30 million. So I think that's the fourth piece on how we support artists, but there's so much more here about why I think this matters and why we need to do this. We need to make this city more fun. <laughs> we need to make this city a place where we retain the talent that comes here 
and where those who grow up here feel pathways of opportunity uh, that are going to lead them uh, to be able to succeed in this city. Uh, and part of that is having a, a vibrant arts, cultural, and social life that is welcoming, inclusive, and celebrates all parts of Boston. And I think it's so often it's the arts community that allows that to happen and fosters that uh, in happening. And so I want to see a great arts agenda, again, driven by artists that's going to allow us in this city uh, to bridge some of the divides we have, uh, to bring people together, and to see that see it flow everywhere. In East Boston and Hyde Park, where we have great arts communities, uh, but also it, as well as in the downtown. Uh, to see it in our museums, but also when you're in our parks. Uh, I want to see it just flow everywhere. And I want a real public arts agenda, and I want us not to be afraid uh, to have public art uh, flow throughout the city. And I always think about our one controversial display of public art in the city down on the Greenway. And that's what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to provoke thought. We're supposed to, you know, some people should love it and some people won't. <laughs> but that's what we want. We shouldn't, we shouldn't view that as a bad thing. Uh, and uh, I want it to flow throughout this city and be part of this city, uh, recognizing everything that's great about it, our diversity, chiefly among that. Because we are diverse and we are more diverse than most cities, but we don't celebrate. And we need to, I think the arts community can help us get there. The second piece for me on this is education, and that's my passion. I want to make sure every child can have access to their arts, uh, uh, to the arts in school, and not once or twice a week for half a school year. I want it to be a regular piece of their entire education and essential, not a specialty as we call it. And I think that's incumbent on us to lean on partnerships to get that done. And certainly the Community Music Center provides a great example. And David always gets upset when I talk about it, but you know he is the music program for the Boston Public Schools. And there are so many other arts organizations and so many foundations like Ed Vesters who've done so much to grow the arts in our Boston Public Schools, but we're not where we need to be yet. And I want that to be a bridge between our arts community and young people. I get excited about that. We spend so much time, I said this at the Create the Vote Forum, but I mean it to my core. We spend so much time talking about STEM, and STEM is important, but I'm gonna be a mayor who makes sure that it's STEAM and not STEM, and that we are recognizing that we have to create a whole education for every student. And I also think there's career pathways there. There's so many more career pathways in the arts today than there were when I was growing up, and that link uh, to the creative economy. And so we need to be plugging our children into the arts in every way, shape, and form from the minute they enter school to the minute they graduate. And I want to reach out to you and talk to you about how we can get that done and turn it into uh, action. And to close just on a personal note, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this and this will be a priority for me and I want you to look at me and say, I want, I want you to talk about me someday the way library advocates talk about Mayor Menino the way park advocates talk about Mayor Menino, and you said you gotta show up. And I wanna be there with my family uh, for the performance in every corner of this city. And I want you to say that we champion the arts. I wanna do that, but I wanna tell you why. <laughs> Not just because I'm a politician with a huge ego. I may be there. It's for two reasons. One, I didn't get the arts when I was in school. I went until about seventh grade before I had any real arts program when I was in school. Uh, and I always thought that it was a hole for me uh, in my development, in my education. And it felt like it was missing. Uh, and so I'm very deeply committed to making sure every child can get the arts in a way that I wasn't able to get. The second is my daughter. And I've got three, but my five-year-old, she's an artist. And I don't ever want her to lose that. Uh, and I can tell you how it happened. Definitely not for me. <laughs> Her grandmother, my mother-in-law, is an avid painter. Uh, and my daughter spent four days a week with my mother-in-law from age zero to about four. And they just painted and painted and painted. And so if you came to my house right now, you would see that we have converted a room into my daughter's art studio. Uh, and she's amazing. Uh, 
and she just loves it. And she loves the different types of paints, and she loves the different textures, and she loves the different canvases, uh, and she loves just playing and experimenting with all of it. And our, you know, we have transformed part of our house into her, her art studio by accident. Um, but now it's sacred space. And just to watch my daughter and her passion for this, to the point where my grandmother, uh, her grandmother will pick her up, a five-year-old, and take her to an art exhibit in this city, and take her uh, to the MFA. I know you're all gonna come tell me about all the other museums that we have to go to and the other displays, and I totally agree with you. But she goes to, to watch her take a five-year-old to the MFA, and my daughter is psyched about it, and she comes back, and she is on cloud nine. I don't ever want her to lose that. I want every child to have the ability to have that. Uh, and that's why I'm gonna be your champion when I'm there. Thank you for this time. Story about your daughter, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm just gonna start by asking you about the cabinet level position. You mentioned that you wanted that position uh, to be filled by an artist. Can you tell us a little bit more about the hiring and recruiting process for that and how involved would the community be in that process? Yep. Uh, so, you don't want me to pick that person, I can assure you. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm gonna come to you and you're gonna help me find this person. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun trying to figure that out because you gotta have that one side of the brain going to be the artist, but you gotta have the other side of the brain going to run a city department. Um, so I'm very excited to meet this crazy person. Uh, but uh, uh, I will come to you, we will have a search committee and we will find uh, the right person. But that's not gonna be internal, that's gonna be me coming to the arts community uh, to find the right person for it. And I'm sure we're definitely not all gonna agree in that, but we're all gonna to listen to each other. Uh, we're going to work real closely. We'll find the right person, uh, and we'll make it happen. Okay, questions. Let's open it up. Who's got a question? So I think part of having that arts agenda is that we're going to have a commitment to the entire arts community. Say. So that's visual and performing, but also within, within that context, again, I don't want it to be uh, an arts, an arts you know, and culture agenda that only benefits artists with big financial backing or whatever the case may be. I want it to flow for every corner of the city, so I'll come back to a, a few points. I'd like to see us tap into whether it's our Main Streets program or community development corporations, but tap into that ability to leverage a lot of that vacant space we see throughout the city um, for arts and you know for the ability to do uh, that pop-up art gallery uh, or that storefront theater for that matter. And I'd like to bring that kind of you know vibrancy throughout our neighborhoods. But the other piece is the investment in um, in public space. Uh, to display or perform, uh, and I think we can do that. There's places out there, and I think when you look at it, it can be a modest expense for the city uh, to get that done. Uh, so I'd like to work with the arts community, again, for the arts and culture department to look at how we can develop space that will be open and accessible for all artists. That was one of the big pieces I learned with the do-it-yourself crowd, um, uh, was that, you know, a lot of them, I, I think there's a little something that they love about the underground aspect a lot of the musicians said to me, look, you know, if we had a permitting process in space that we could easily access without having a front money we don't have, we wouldn't have to be in a basement in Austin. Uh, and I take that to heart, you know? I, I, wanna, I, want, I want those artists to feel like they've got a place they can go uh, and perform without having to go anywhere. Yeah, I think the main part of the question is that the larger institutions that already exist yeah. aren't highlighting local 
So I'm happy to, I'm happy as the mayor to leverage pressure on these institutions to respond to the whole arsenal. I'm happy to do that. That sort of for me goes without saying, but I hear you, I should say it. So I'm happy to do that. But in the, at the same time, I'm gonna try and find avenues for everybody to express themselves. Yep. Questions? Uh, yeah. Um, Councilor Dr. Media is I want to thank you for um, not only for your comments today, but also for the fact that you have made uh, your commitment to arts and culture uh, apparent when you talked last week in front of the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and also Tuesday night at WGBH when you address the entire city of Boston. So it's not just what you say when you're here talking to us, it's very clear. Um, one of the things that you talked about on Tuesday night was how you might use your bully pulpit. And uh, I love the fact that you recognize the opportunity that is available for the city to partner with the arts and cultural community to uh, utilize uh, different uh, space opportunities. It's something we haven't had the opportunity to do as much as we would have liked. And we are so thrilled that you are willing to be our partner and champion with that. The other part of that is uh, the Mass Cultural Facilities Fund, uh, which has been an integral part of getting capital investment in our infrastructure in Boston uh, for our arts organizations, including, if I'm not mistaken, perhaps uh, this one here. And uh, part of that comes from us making our voice heard on the, uh, at the state capitol, but we also would, would ask for your support and would like to know if will you also use your bully pulpit to be our advocate at the state capitol for the cultural facilities funding and for funding through the Mass Cultural Council. Yep. And I, I've had the opportunity as a counselor to uh, attend a couple of uh, interviews, I guess, with the Mass Cultural Council when they're looking at possible awardings for, for some grants. And, you know, absolutely, I want to go up there and, uh, uh, and be, be your champion at the legislature as well. So I, I just give you that straight answer. Yes, we'll be working hand in hand and this our arts department we will have will be focused on these pieces and making sure that um, when I need to be up at the State House fighting for that, I'll be up there fighting for that. I think the other exciting piece here um, uh, is that I think as we look to up that budget and figure out a way to get it from one million to two to three to five, you know, in as short a period of time is if we in the city signal and we're going to be serious about investing in the arts, I think the philanthropic community will come in uh, behind that in ways that we may not have seen before. I certainly have had members say that. You know, Ron, you and I have talked about that before, but um, I, I've certainly had some members of the philanthropic community say, look, I support the arts right now, and I do a lot for it, but if you show me that you're going to be serious about getting behind this, I will bring more to the table. Um, so I, I, that's another aspect. We've got to go up to the state without a doubt. But I just want to mention that. Thank you very much. So I think uh, I think obviously if we're going to do if we're going to do this, it's going to part of it's going to have to come out of the general fund and the city budget. So I'll just say that I recognize that as a reality right now. I don't want to make promises, you know, etched in stone. But I'm serious about the creation of this department. I think it's going to mean that some other departments are going to have to change, uh, and you know, will look different or won't exist. And I think we're going to have to shift funds, you know, within the city budget to, to get this off the ground. My hope is we can grow it from there through 1% uh, and then hopefully you know, begin that process and let, as we do in most city departments, looking for the grants and looking for the philanthropic piece to really get some work behind it. 
uh, and, and go lobby at the state. The other piece I'll just say is, I suspect uh, many of you may have a lot of ideas that I don't have. <laughs> so I wanna make sure that we're listening uh, and everything's on the table as far as I'm concerned. So I'll, I'll be open on that. I'm gonna say in reference to that and to the prior question, um, these days I sleep about four hours and spend all day uh, campaigning and late at night, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I'm only got four hours of sleep, but so I don't remember anything I say anymore. Uh, I, don't remember, I don't remember what I said at WGBH, I'm glad I said it, but so one benefit of that is you can tell me, you know, a month from now that I made all sorts of wild promises over the funding and, and I'll be obligated to follow through. Okay, we're going to hold you to that anyway. Uh, yes, right back here. I don't know if the real I, I don't know if the one percent through real estate can work because of the linkage formula we have set up right now. Just to be honest with you, and that's all geared towards housing and jobs. So we got to be we got to be careful on that. So if there isn't a uh, if, if there's an additional piece, absolutely. And I am open to rethinking how we invest in linkage because I think this stuff is all connected. But I want us to have a real thoughtful conversation on how we get that done. use of city space, I would like to see be very different in, in many ways. So, one, and the, my, my general analogy uh, is that I want you to feel like you're walking in the Apple store when you walk into City Hall at 1010 Mass Ave. And part of that is I just want an individual with an iPad flying at you and, and the only thing I'm going to say is how can I help you. Uh, I want one-stop shopping, I want every city service available online, I certainly want to make that part of streamlining and arts permitting process. So you don't even have to go into City Hall uh, and change that. But also what we do with that space is, is very key because I think we can just make it so much more functional through the use of technology. And obviously if you can blend and connect that with the arts, all the better.
so my question becomes, uh, are you going to help us, are you going to uh, support us when we use your ability to help it to enable us to be a world-class, uh, showcase our artists on a world-class medium? Yes. <laughs> festivals, you know, I want to see the festivals here, big and small, you know, every type, I want them here, uh, and I want, you know, I want tourists walking through Boston and bumping into festivals that they didn't even know were going on. I want Boston residents going out and bumping into festivals, and there are cities where that is the fear, uh, and I want, I, and again, I want, I want to emulate other cities and having that type of feel and process that enables it to happen. But the great part here is I know Boston's art community, arts community, will put its own unique signature on it that will make it uniquely Boston. Um, and, and that's the part that excites me. But yeah, I want it to be global. And I've sat with, with groups of artists multiple times during this campaign, learned so much, and it's always the how hard it was to, to pull a festival together or so, you know, a, a performance together. And, and then I had the opportunity to have breakfast with Ted Cutler that was in, that was very interesting breakfast. <laughs> Maybe just one more question right here. Yes. Hi, um, my name is Kim Dawson, and I'm with the online Agencies in Massachusetts. And my question for you is actually not about a promise or anything, but um, you had said that during this campaign process that you've been educated a lot about the work that we all collectively do. Um, my question to you is, given you know, we're a community that often sees very creative with different types of connections with other fields, other industries. What do you think that we can do better from your side of things about being able to reach our voices out to folks that might need education about the different types of work that we do? Well, I think you're doing it in this race, to be honest. It's a great question, and I, I don't, I'm not trying to be just a, a, a panderer to you on this. It's a great question. It's an incredible question. thought is partially is because I just had wasn't engaging the arts community the way I should have, but I ran for city council four times before I ran for mayor, and I don't think we ever talked about the arts. Um, but what you've done in this race has been amazing. So you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. Um, and it's, it's great. You only six years. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but that's, but, but that's you know, what you're doing right now is exactly what you need to be doing. Just been, it, it, you've been the, you you the, you've been like the signature advocacy group in this campaign. Far away. Thank you, Thank you so much.